Welcome back to another episode of Import Modify. On this episode, we will be power washing the RC51 clean and getting this thing prepped. I do have k and filters that I ordered. They will be coming in sometime next week. Now granted, next week is Christmas week, so probably going to get those at the end of next week. Fingers crossed. But I do need to hurry up and get this thing power washed. Power washed. So that's what we're going to be doing and also i'll be cleaning up the fairings and everything else i'll get the air box mounted up and just wait for those filters to come in because i do not want to put the gas tank on until i have the filters in it's just too much of a pain in the ass the way they have that gas tank set up and if you see the back of the gas tank how it extends that's to keep the weight more centralized around this area it helps with handling so all this is very very hard to get the tank up in the upright position with the way that tank is set up so I'm gonna get the air box and the K&N filters on first then we'll move on to getting the gas tank body work on but we're gonna get this thing all cleaned up I will go ahead and bleed the front and rear brakes get those flushed up and on another note I did order me some seats for the project E46 build now granted I was gonna go with some NRG seats but as I started looking more at the dimensions of the seats, I don't know if you guys are very familiar with aftermarket seats, but you got to be very careful how you order them. Because once you get the seat brackets and everything in, and if they come with slider rails, uh, most of the time with my experience is some of the aftermarket seats, they sit a lot higher than the stock seats. And I don't want to be all high up from where I was from the OEM seats because I just don't... It, it feels like a hoopty when I'm riding it like that. I just don't like it. I like to be low in the seat. So I started looking at other dimensions of uh, knockoff seats and I did find some nice suede black seats. Uh, they're a race type seat with the slots for the harness to go through. Now they're, uh, they're not any major name brand. They are some cheaper racing seats, but that's okay. This is a budget build on the E46 and I'm totally okay with that. So I did get them in a the black suede. So I think they'll look very good in the car and I did get them with the E46 brackets so they'll be you know complete bolt in but I paid specific attention to the height of the seat I just don't want to sit high I want to sit low so the ones that I picked out had the lowest dimensions uh, for the bottom of the seat and that's what I was really looking for and a lot of times when you order these seats now I'm a normal size guy some of these seats are made for small people and I'm not a small little person, I'm just average sized person, but that's kind of like the main thing I was looking at when I was looking at dimensions of the seat. So that's what led me to make the selection that I did on what I ordered, but when they do come in, I'll show it to you guys. But also on a, another note, if you watch my other episodes, you saw me complaining about the title on the 300ZX. I was able to get in touch with the guy who bought it uh, who I bought it off of and I sent the title back to him he's in Dallas and he is going to transfer the title into his name because I was having a uh, I was having trouble with the double title transfer what happened is he bought it and then he sold it to me and then he the original owner had it signed signed to him and then he signed it to me and then I went to the DMV asked for the best solution quickest solution that ain't gonna cost me an arm and a leg they told me it would be best to send the title back to him and get the title transferred into his name. He would sign it and then for it to be transferred into my name, if that makes any sense. But I was lucky that I kept his contact information. I got in touch with him today. I went ahead today and I mailed that off, the title off to him. And I also sent him the money for the fees for transferring it. 
So he'll get that in next week. He said next week he'll go ahead and take care of that. So as soon as I get that title in, I will start working on it. Until then, I'm not gonna touch the damn car because I don't wanna put work in the car if I can't get a title for it. Because I don't have a title, I can't drive it on the street, it's useless to me. That would, that would make it a parts donor vehicle for me if that was to happen and I couldn't get the title. But right now I do have it outside. There she is right there. Now granted, between the seats and the K&N filters on my motorcycle, there went 500 bucks like poof. So I consider that a Christmas present to myself. So yeah, we just gotta get some more funds going for the drive shaft and the exhaust system. And I'll probably just start ordering the pieces for the exhaust system. And we'll just have to budget that out because right now Christmas took a toll on me really so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these uh, these body works well the body pieces moved over to the side lower this lift down so I can get it off of the lift and then I'll move my truck around to where I can load it in the truck and I'm just gonna take it to the car wash and pressure wash this thing clean in the back of my truck stop at the parts store get me some brake fluid come back blow it out and start bleeding brakes and get this thing going All right, I got some old used gloves in here. And I got them taped off. That'll be good. I'm not gonna directly spray down on the throttle, so it'll be fine. And I got this plugged off with a rag, that plugged off with a shop towel rag, and fuel return, vents, and another vent. Just put screws in there. That'll cap that off, because I'm not gonna be directly spraying the hoses. I'll just be going back and forth indirectly, making sure I don't hit those spots directly and just focus on the main areas of getting this whole thing cleaned up. we made it back from the car wash bikes looking pretty I need to air up the compressor blow this thing blow this thing out dry and I got me some dot 4 brake fluid that's what I run in all my vehicles and motorcycles so we can do a brake bleed also got a big one because I still need to breathe uh, bleed the brakes and the clutch line out on the e46 so that should be plenty enough to do that but she looks a lot prettier now guys she is nice and clean. So we can go over and air up this compressor and let that go to work. So we'll let that air up. We'll blow this thing out dry, then we'll get it back on the lift. So we got her up on the lift now and I'm running out of time for this afternoon so I will be back tomorrow to bleed the brakes and the clutch, go through uh, things a little bit more thoroughly like cleaning the throttle bodies out and just kind of cleaning up around the oil filter area and we will continue on from there but she's clean now and she's good to go.
All right, back in the garage another day. We got Eric in the shop today. Say what's up. What's up? What you got going on with your uh, your engine over here, Eric? I'm gonna put on a water pump and uh, crank gear and time it. So he's cleaning up the rust off the front surface of the block. He's gonna be installing his water pump, cam seals. He still needs to find his cam bolts. You found your cam bolts? You don't know where the hell he at, where they at. So, good luck on that. But yeah, he's got some motivation to start getting this thing together. He wants to get it in the car pretty soon, so that's pretty cool. And then I imagine once you get it in the car, you're gonna be even more motivated to get all that manifold made and everything else, right? Yeah, I'm gonna tube the front end, so I'll probably uh, take it right back out after I get it in. But at least I can tab up an exhaust manifold. So all you, you fans of Eric, got some good stuff coming on his end. He's gonna be getting this thing together and it's gonna be pretty cool. What he was explaining to me on the roll cage here is he's got some tubing he's ordering and he's gonna be bringing it from here down to the front to make it legal for the, uh, the amount of speed he's gonna be doing down the, the drag strip so that'll be pretty cool and who knows once I see this guy ripping down the drag strip making fast passes and everything it might motivate me to build something to go fart around with on a drag strip I never drag raced a day in my life other than on the, uh, the streets but uh, never once have I been down a drag strip and I'd like to try it out so who knows, maybe whenever I get this done and Eric goes to the drag strip, I'll take my BMW down there and see how fast this thing will run. The way it's set up, I honestly think this is a 12 second car just off the top of my head, but you know, I could be wrong, but I, I believe I can do 12 seconds in this thing as light as it is and about as much power as this thing puts out. And this thing should put out about 340 horsepower in a car that weighs about 2,000 pounds since I stripped it. But we'll have to see when the time comes. So he's messing around with that. Myself, I come in to bleed some brakes and clean up the throttle bodies and a couple other thing, uh, things on the bike. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today and just uh, get things prepped. I'll probably get the, the air box in because I'm waiting on the filters to come in. But like I said before, I don't want to put the tank on until I get the filters because like the other bikes, the tank don't lift up because of the extra, the extra part of the tank on the back that holds the fuel to centralize the weight that prevents the tank from being flipped open like a, a trunk lid so I'm just gonna wait and, until I get the filters in and then I'll put the tank on and stuff but I'm not gonna let that hold me back I'll go ahead and do a couple things to the bike that way when I get them in it'll be less work I have to do I got the caps off. Actually, still gotta take this one off real quick. So I got the reservoir caps off in the front and in the rear. Front brake, clutch, rear brake. As you can tell, the fluid's pretty uh, contaminated. It's dark. That's definitely a no-go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I have me a vacuum pump with the little reservoir to catch the fluid. I use that to suck out the fluid out of the reservoirs. And then from there I add new fluid. And then it's basically just opening up the bleeder screw, giving it some pumps, flushing the old fluid out, replacing it with the new. And that is pretty much it on a brake bleed. 
whenever you're pumping it you hold this master cylinder down with the lever and then you break the bleed screw and that allows the, the fluid to come out the old and then the new fluid to go down and then you tighten it back off then release the lever that way you don't get any air in the lines and that's pretty much how you do a brake bleed and it's the same principle from a car to a motorcycle so we're gonna gap his crank pulley on the bottom his crank gear that way he has the proper clearances for the belt he's gonna aluminum so that uh, you know, screw up thrust clearance deal. And what I do is I put this on first like that. So I leave it like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the reservoirs with fresh brake fluid. So as you can tell the fluid coming out into the catch can right here, this little reservoir, it's clear. So we know that these brakes are 100% bled and I bled it down to the low level on the top so once I put the cap on I can see how far the diaphragm sits down in there because you don't want to put it so high that when you put the cap on it allows it to over, overflow and spill out so that's the reason I got that on a low level right now. But we're going to go ahead now and move on to the front brake and get that done. Then after that, we'll take care of the clutch. All right, moving on to the front brakes, we have two calipers on each side. So the way I basically do this, if you notice here on the master cylinder, I have two separate lines. So the way that I do the front brakes is I'll bleed one side until it becomes clear in the, uh, the reservoir down here. And then I'll tighten that bleed screw off and then I'll move on to the other side and bleed that one until it's clear. And then after that, you know, we're flushed on both ends. So we've got the front brakes done now and we're moving on to the clutch. This damn thing spits every time I go to uh, engage the lever. So I'm going to have to lay this rag up on top so it doesn't get all over my freaking lever and stuff. It's been doing that. But this is where you got the bleeder screw at on the mechanism right here for the clutch release. And we'll go ahead and get this thing bled and that'll be that on the bleeding. So. Fresh fluid, levels great. Fresh fluid, levels great. Fresh fluid, levels great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these throttle bodies a little bit. 
get that old gas residual buildup right there out of there and also I'm gonna clean up a little bit on the bottom where the oil filter goes and from there we'll go ahead and we'll mount the air box So got the throttle bodies nice and clean now. Everything's good on that end. And I noticed that I have new spark plugs, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. This one's easy to get to on the back right here. And on the front, I had to remove the oil cooler. Eric's got pizza. And on the oil cooler right here, I had to remove two nuts up top just to move this oil cooler out of the way to gain access right here to where the spark plug is. right there so the spark plug gap is 40 thousandths I checked it it's good I put anti-seize on the threads always do that you want to make sure you do that that way they don't seize in the head okay, that's a bad day if they don't want to come out so now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these and replace them with those remount the oil cooler then after that we'll get to putting the air box on Alright, so the spark plugs are in it now, front, well actually front, oil coolers back in, rear, and these were the condition of the old ones. Not too bad, but wouldn't hurt to replace them, so we're good on that. Now we're going to move on to the air box, but just a little bit of an update. Eric's got the timing belt going on this bad boy. So that thing is coming together. And I had a buddy here stop by. It's Aldo. Say hi, Aldo. Aldo is the owner of that 8080 GTR Skyline. So, Aldo, whenever I'm done with my BMW, you're going to run me? Yeah. All right. A so you guys, yeah, a little trip to <laughs> Mexico. So, you guys heard it. When the E46 is done, me and Aldo is going to go ahead and do a little comparison and see how well my E46 holds up to his little GTR Skyline. Cool deal. I don't have to practice with this good time, good time. Yeah, that's all good. We'll see how it goes. I really think I got something for you on this though. We'll see how, how it works out. But cool. This thing's uh, coming together pretty good. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this air box cleaned up a little bit and we'll get it mounted on there. Alright, so we got the two hoses on the bottom of the air box in right there. We got this catch can right here mounted, and that was a pain in the ass to get it to fit on once I slid the air box into its place. And the velocity stacks are now bolted in. So now we got brakes flushed, we got the clutch flushed, we got new spark plugs in it, air box is clean, put back in. We're good to go. The only thing I'm lacking to do now is do an oil change and a coolant flush, and then we'll be good to go on this thing. We're still waiting on those K&N filters to come in, and then once that's in, I have the gas tank and everything in, and I'm pretty much waiting for that to come in, then I'm gonna put all the body work back together at once. And then after that, I'll take it on a test spin. I'll mount the GoPro on my helmet and let you guys see how, how this thing rides, but pretty much that's all I'm gonna do on this episode. Just wanted to come in and get caught up on the motorcycle. Aldo's right here. Say hi, Aldo. And Aldo, he, like I said before, he has that uh, 8080 GTR Skyline that he won. And I did do a review of it. So just hit my videos, go back a little bit and check it out. 
It's a pretty cool episode. I liked it a lot. I think pretty much it's pretty quick for what it is. And earlier I talked to him about running the E46 once I have it done. Because I'm curious how this car is going to hold up against it. And he agreed to do it. So future episode we're going to be running that car against that 8080 GTR. So fingers crossed. I hope I can hand his ass to him. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... You guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys on the next episode.